<laughs> it's Rob the Sapphire Gardener representing Ession's Family Garden and we're going to do something a little different uh, we're just going to talk about some of the things we do in our garden and one of our garden philosophies and that is uh, growing uh, Southeast Asian vegetables in our garden um, but anyone who's watched our channel for a while knows that we are a multicultural family um, my wife is from the Philippines I'm obviously a Georgia boy if you can't tell from the accent I grew up down in a, a central Georgia so what we grew up eating and growing are completely different and one of the reasons that we moved up to the area we live in now was to have her able to experience and live around uh, more people who are from a multicultural upbringing and especially people who are from Southeast Asia like her, primarily from the Philippines. We say Southeast Asia but we focus on the Philippines because that's where she's from. But what we want to do is uh, talk a little bit about uh, what we do to grow Southeast Asian vegetables in our garden, especially vegetables that my wife grew up in the Philippines. Another phrase I like to use is a happy wife, happy life, uh, or you could say happy spouse, happy house. And we try to do that. And we like to take full advantage of any ways that we can to grow different vegetables that she grew up with so that she feels at home, and this is her home now. She's a U.S. citizen, uh, just like I am. And we want her to feel as at home as possible here. And we also want to expose our kids to uh, both cultures. Uh, we grow a lot of different foods that I grew up with down in Georgia. I'm a huge macaroni and cheese, fried pork chops, uh, grits. I love the food that I grew up down south in Georgia, but we also love growing different foods that she uh, grew up with down south of the border, around the world in the Philippines. And we try to do everything we can to grow those types in our garden so that we have a blending of culture. And there are a lot of different things that we have to, uh, a lot of different things we have to take into account and ways that we have to use because obviously the Philippines is a much different climate than we have here in Northern Virginia. So we're going to show and talk about some of those ways that we extend our seasons to grow like our greenhouse and different techniques. So I'm actually going to go sit down and this video I will be a little bit longer as we talk about different factors we have to think about. And part of growing is finding seeds from companies that she would have grown up with and our family grew back in the Philippines or that they just bought out in the market because obviously when we go out to our grocery stores it's easy for me to find foods that I grew up with down in Georgia, but it's very hard to find some of the fruits and vegetables that she grew up with in the Philippines. So we try to find companies like Kitazawa Seed Company that have seeds that might have been native to the Philippines and other countries in Southeast Asia. Then we also sometimes look to find snacks that uh may not be as common in America but are similar to what she grew up back home like a chicken Chiron so we got a chicken skin chips which is basically the skin Ch chicken Chiron is actually a pig in, a chicken intestines alright I'm back at the house for a minute um, 
and I'm going to try to cover a few points so that we can stay on track and not just be a, a rambling session, which is what most of our videos are. <laughs> but uh, there's a, a reason why we grow what we grow in our garden. Uh, a lot of it is for health reasons and we want to have uh, vegetables growing that we trust. We know what went into them. Uh, we want to know they're as natural as possible. And you may hear some background noise. The kids are behind me doing some things. Um, and uh, I mention out in the yard, happy wife, happy life. A lot of what we grow is just so that my wife can have access to things that she grew up with. But also because the world is changing. Um, we know a lot of what's going on in the world, conflicts, things that you may have been able to access may not be on the store shelves anymore. Things that you could go to a specialty store may not be on the shelf anymore just because things that are shipped from out of country that were readily available may not be readily available. So we want to try our best to be able to grow what we need so we can be self-sufficient and still have access to a lot of the things that we like to eat as a family and part of it is uh, money too because a lot of things that we love to eat may be more expensive than if we are growing them ourselves uh, when you go in and you see uh, specialty plants like lychee like uh, bitter melon like dragon fruit things that are, are prevalent in the tropics and are common you go to the market you get them for pennies per pound if you go to a store to get them here they're going to be a lot more expensive so we want to try to grow our own when possible everything we know we can't grow you know we'll never be able to grow rice um, we could but it would definitely not be cost efficient on our property we don't have acres and acres that we can grow and and thresh it, dry it out, do all the things we need to do to have rice seed. So some things we know we're going to have to buy, um, but we want to try to grow what we can. We mentioned the things going on in the world, politics are changing, and that plays a, a big part of it. A lot of uh, things that we like to eat and one example is garlic. We grow our own garlic on the property. We have been for the last few years. Uh, every now and then we'll go out and we'll buy a pre-made uh, jar of garlic that's already minced in water uh, just because sometimes it's really, it's lazy but it's quick and easy to say well we need garlic in this recipe that's uh, chopped and minced so let's get a spoonful out of this jar as opposed to getting a clove, uh, mincing it ourselves, or getting a bowl, breaking the cloves apart, doing it ourselves. So sometimes we do that, but garlic is a great example of things going on in the world. Um, most of the garlic in the world is grown in China, and uh, I try to stay out of politics as much as I can, but we know that our relationship with China ebbs and flows. If 80% of the garlic grown in the world comes from China and suddenly China decides they don't want to ship as much out to us or we decide we don't want to buy as much from them, then that impacts what we have access to or it impacts uh, the cost in our grocery store. So by growing our own, we remove that roadblock and that applies to a lot of different vegetables. We grow a lot of things in America. We do grow some garlic in America but we don't grow a huge percentage of it. Um, China is 80%, uh, India is 5%, Bangladesh is 1%, and the rest of the world is 1% or less, and including America. So by growing our own, we remove uh, a hurdle that may impact us in the future if the political climate changes. 
And again, we're not a political channel. We're not a, a religious channel. We try to stay out of both of those, even though obviously we're a religious family. Um, we're a family of faith, but we don't make that the focus of our channel, and we don't make our personal politics a focus of the channel. We want everybody to believe what they believe, vote how they want to vote, and uh, that has nothing to do with us. And uh, hopefully when you come to our channel, you don't bring your beliefs and expect us to believe the same thing because we believe in every individual, every family's right to, you know, worship as they please and to believe what they please. If it harms none, do what you please. Um, when we do grow things here in our property, we try to be smart about it. A lot of vegetables that grow in the Philippines won't grow as easily here. And again, I say Southeast Asia, but we go back to the Philippines, uh, which is part of Southeast Asia. And we know some things that grow easily there won't grow easily here. Some things are more universal. Uh, we talk about uh, eggplant or aubergine as um, it's known in some countries. We can grow that around the world. When we talk about uh, garlic, that's grown. It can be grown in lots of different places uh, with the right growing conditions. But when we start talking about citrus, like uh, kalamandan, we start talking about um, uh, lychee, we start talking about uh, dragon fruit, we start talking about uh, lots of different things that only grow in warm weather areas or long season areas. We try to grow some of that in our garden when we talk about uh, a lot of the root crops. We talk about taro, we talk about turmeric, we talk about things that take a long time to grow, long, warm seasons. We try to grow that, but we have to kind of trick the plants a little bit. So we do have a greenhouse that extends our growing season. We have a large enough home that we can grow some things inside. So we start our turmeric, we start our ginger, we start our taro inside till it warms up outside, then we take it to the greenhouse or we put it directly into the ground once it's warm enough outside. Uh, our growing season is probably seven, eight months. Some things like turmeric take 10 months. And when you're in a warm climate like the Philippines where it's warm all year round, it grows well there. But here we have to trick it a little bit. So we start a lot of things inside down in our basement uh, or we overwinter things in our garage and our greenhouse which is heated and that way we can grow a lot of Southeast Asian type vegetables here in Virginia. Um, and there are lots of different season extenders. You can have greenhouses, you can have cold frames, you can have hoop houses, polytunnels. Lots of different things you can do, or you can simply do like we do for some things and grow them indoors, like our sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes like warm weather. We grow sweet potatoes indoors. We eat the tubers. We also eat the leaves, which are known as camote tops in the Philippines, or camote. Uh, we grow those indoors. We get a pot. We put some tubers in there, we let it grow throughout the cold months, we take some of the leaves off, we eat those. When it gets warm, we take them outside, we take the, the entire pot, we add it to a garden bed, we grow it outside, and then we get the tubers, and then we rinse, recycle, repeat. Um, in the Philippines, you don't have to do that. You know, you can grow them almost year round, here we have to trick the plants a little bit but that works out for us and you really have to look at days to maturity that's one of the big differences uh, in plants in the Southeast Asia where it's tropical warmer and plants 
growing here in Virginia, you know, zone 7A, where it's warm a lot of time, like out, it's 90 degrees outside now, but we also have four seasons, so we have a uh, partially warm spring, a hot summer, partially warm fall, cold winters, so tropical plants that we're growing, the Kalamundin, the Meyer lemon, um, those plants, you know, we have to take care of them, we have to baby them. So we look where the plants are coming from, we look at the growing conditions, we look at how long it takes them to mature, and uh, Using that, we can grow a lot of Southeast Asian uh, fruits and vegetables here in our country. And there are lots of them. Um, I actually made a list. You may see me looking down um, as I talk. Uh, some plants we can grow here, no problem, because the, the days of maturity are not that long, like eggplant, okra, daikon, radish. Um, garlic, a lot of those we can, loofah, others, yard long beans we can grow, wing beans, but there are some that we do need to grow indoors or use the greenhouse like uh, moringa, the calamansi, uh, bitter melon, we start that indoors, take it out so that it matures enough to give us fruit, um, ube, so lots of different things we have to consider and uh, it works out for us and so far so good and we're going to keep doing what we're doing and one thing that we plan to do is to try to do more videos like this spotlight more specific plants how they grow here as opposed to back in um, Southeast Asia and how you can grow those in your garden. Like Moringa, lots of people grow Moringa now. Uh, it's classified as a super fruit by a lot of people. And, you know, just so many health benefits. So we're going to talk about those. We're gonna talk about how we grow them. And we're going to talk about how we cook them. A lot of folks want to see us do a little bit more cooking videos. We're going to try to show some of what we grow, how we cook it. We just did a, a series of videos on eggplant, how we use that, and we're going to try to do more of that with different um, different Filipino recipes and maybe some uh, Central Georgia recipes. So hang tight. We're going to show you a few more things, and then we're going to let you get your time back. So some plants. We just know we can't keep out to overwinter up here, like our cranberry, hibiscus, false roselle. And uh, we got these from our friend Dan at Dan Permaculture Food Forest. So we know some things like this, we can try to overwinter either in our garage, which is not heated, but is always a little warmer. Very rarely does it go down below uh, freezing also our figs and we've done a video which i'll link here of how we typically overwinter our figs we wrap them in burlap and plastic to give them a shield from the extreme cold weather up here and when i say extreme it's always relative our cold is not like the cold weather up in uh, northern canada or alaska but it's colder than it is down in florida georgia alabama Louisiana, Mississippi, so a lot of our plants can tolerate some cold, but they can't tolerate, you know, temperatures down in the, the teens or the single digits or below zero for any extended amount of time. So a lot of these we know we just have to protect them, like our pineapple plant here. We assume we're going to get a pineapple from it eventually, but it's more of a vanity plant. We're not going to have 20 pineapple plants here because we know it's another one that has to go in and we just have to take care of it like we do our citrus plants. But we always want to try to get as much as we can 
to remind my wife of the culture back in the Philippines. So we want to get citrus plants like calamansi that we can use and it's worth it to go ahead and, and baby them a little bit. Wow, this fig tree's blown up, but no figs on it. And this one we didn't wrap our traditional way, we just used a plant cover for it without a burlap wrap. So it died back some, but it's grown back twice as much as it had before. It's just not growing enough because the new growth rarely gets figs on it that mature in time. You want to get that off of the old growth. And uh, we'll cut it back this winter and then wrap it so that it'll probably be half this size. But next year when it warms up, we'll get fruit and hopefully abundant fruit on this one. And I suspect these containers have holes. Some of those roots on this plant have probably gone through the holes down into the ground to get up all that nutrient that washes down deeper in the soil and just gives us opportunities to uh, grow more abundance. And of course we got okra everywhere. Okra is a very popular plant in the Philippines and uh, we try to grow it throughout our garden somewhat as a container plant so peas and things can grow up it. But we also just love to eat okra too. And it looks like Mrs. SG has done a lot of harvesting. We had some over here but yeah, you can't walk too far in the garden without finding more of it. So, for us, it's worth it to uh, have multiple means of caring for plants that typically you'd see in uh, Southeast Asia, Southwest Asia areas. But the biggest one is our greenhouse and our garage. It's nice to have room to uh, put some plants inside without taking them in and out of your actual house, taking the outside insects in. And hopefully we'll be harvesting hopefully we'll be harvesting some of our Meyer lemons soon. Yeah, things are coming to a slow halt for the summer, but as we get beds clear, we'll put stuff in for the fall. Alright, so we know this was a little bit longer than we normally do. We try to keep our videos short, but covered a lot. And we'll be doing some uh, shorter follow-ups on some of the individual plants we have in our garden. So... On behalf of the family here at Essayance Family Garden, I'm Rob the Sapper Gardener saying God bless our great country America and God bless you wherever you reside around the world. Take care. Sapper out.